Hi, I'm Lawrence Edwards from Black Mountain Honey. Welcome to another episode of No Nonsense Beekeeping. Today, we're doing another disease recognition video, and today I'm gonna to show you how to identify and manage chalk brood. So once again, if this video is helpful, please hit the subscribe button, please hit the bell so you're notified of every video. We've got tons more videos like this coming up, and if you hit the subscribe button and the bell, you'll be the first to be notified of these videos. So what are we going to do in this video? I'm going to show you some pictures of some chalk brood um, and I'm going to show you how to identify and manage that within your colonies. So chalk brood is a really strange uh, disease to talk about. It's, it's a bacterial infection um, and there's no known treatment for it. Again, similar to sac brood, you can't, there's no silver bullet, there's nothing you can add to your hives to get rid of chalk brood. Um, it's completely dependent on the queen and her genetics. Now, again, if I'm going through my colonies and I notice one or two cells of chalk brood, I'm definitely not doing anything. Um, chalk brood is something that tends to crop up at certain times of the year or in certain weather conditions. So I find early on in the year, I, I get a lot of chalk brood in some colonies. Um, and then within three to four weeks, the weather's perked up, the humidity's less, it's drier and warmer, and the chalk brood's gone. Um, and the colonies are absolutely fine, and they produce lots of honey and really healthy bees. So it's not something that you need to take action on every single time that you see it. And similar to the sac brood video that I did, it's only when that, uh, that bacterial infection becomes persistent or damaging to the colony that I will go in and I'll take an action. So in this video, I'm just gonna show you some pictures of some chalk brood. I'll get into one of my hives that's got a particularly bad case of it, and I'll show you what it looks like when it goes bad. Um, I'll talk about the management and how I manage those colonies uh, to reduce uh, the chances of becoming infected through chalk brood, and then how I kind of uh, reactively manage them by putting new queens in there. So we'll open up some hives and I'll show you some chalk brood. So this is the colony where I've had the issue with chalk brood. So let's get inside and I'll show you some close-up images of chalk brood. So a couple of ways of identifying chalk brood. The first one is you look in the frames. Um, just worth saying, this colony is really low on stores. It, very different from all of the other hives in here. The, I think the chalk brood is affecting their ability to get out and forage. It's affecting their ability to kind of get the numbers up to a level where they've got capacity to get out and forage. So they're a bit grumpy. Um, But that's the frame we're looking at there. Not liking the pattern on this one at all. So this one's due for requeening anyway. But as you can see in this corner here, chalk brood. Really, really easy to identify. It's these open cells here and here. It looks like kind of a dried up white marshmallowy thing in the back of it. Got more on this side. Really, really easy to identify. So if you're seeing that in your frames and you want a way to kind of guarantee that that is chalk brood, you need to look for mummies. So you'll see the bees dragging mummies out the front. You might see them in front of the hive here um, or the other place that you'll almost certainly see them is on the floor or on your mesh. So I'll zoom in and show you some of the mummies. So really, really easy to see. What you're looking at there at the bottom of the floor is mummies from chalk brood. So if you're seeing that at the bottom of your floor or on the mesh, you've got an issue with chalk brood. So I never waste an opportunity for a positive interaction. That colony is not even filling the brood box. So the super's coming off. Queen's in there, she's laying, but obviously she's gonna get killed soon. She's gonna be replaced with a new cell. Um, the foraging capacity is gonna go down. So I want to make sure there's enough stores in there to see them through that period. So feeders on and uh, the, the honey season for this colony never even got going and it's finished. So we get these guys ready for winter. We're gonna feed them, give them a new queen, get them through the winter. So no messing around, 12 liters of syrup that's gone in there. That's two to one syrup. They'll take all of that down. They'll turn it into more bees. There won't be the issue with chalk brood because they're gonna kill that queen, replace it with a new mated queen. Um, uh, and then they're gonna get ready for winter by expanding the brood nest with a new queen and getting sufficient stores into the colony to see them through the winter. So that colony there, that was a particularly bad infestation of chalk brood. Um, it is quite clear that that queen, the, the 
bees that she produces just cannot cope with the bacterial infection and it's really detrimental to the colony. So the only, the only course of action for that hive is to kill the queen. Again, I don't want any queens in my apiary um, that are gonna be severely impacted by the effects of disease. So the, king, the queen gets killed and I'm adding a new cell from my F0 breeder queen who is proven through my own trials to be really, really resistant to sac brood, chalk brood and bald brood as well. She's not got a genetic disposition to bald brood. So that, that will resolve the problem. I'm 100% I'm sure of that. And again, there's no real need for me to melt all of those frames. Through my own experience, just by changing the genetics of that line of bees, they will clear that up. And because they've not got that genetic disposition um, to be impacted by the bacterial infection of chalk brood, they, they, they will resolve that problem by themselves. And there's no need for me to melt down that wax. So that's it for today's video. Again, if you've enjoyed this video, please hit the subscribe button please hit the bell so you're notified of every video and I'll see you next time.